Grace and Pete's everybody, welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This is part number four of our five part series, looking at the uniqueness of the Bible. It's such a special book because of a special God, but that God is so special because we are special to him. It's amazing, I know, but he chooses to use a book to communicate all this to us. So that's why today we wanna to talk about the transforming power of this word, of this book. But before we do that, we wanna pray. And Father, we pray that you would please transform us by the time we spend in your word, in Jesus' name, amen. The Bible is a transforming book. Uh, whether you believe it or not, its power is power. So when we go and, and, and look at it now, not just as this prophetic book or as this historical text, it is a transforming force for those who open it in faith. And so when we see that, we realize, okay, you can't change the Bible, but guess what? The Bible will change you. People can choose to do whatever they want. They can choose to ignore the fact and even close the book. But just because I close the book and ignore the fact, it doesn't change the fact. For example, when you look at John chapter 16, verse 13, it says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he is come, he will guide you into all truth and he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come what i want us to catch in the verse is how when it says whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak the bible does not say this verse does not say that the word will say to you what you want to hear <laughs> it says whatsoever is said is what will be said Think of it in this way, um, how you can close the book, ignore it, and, and just piece it out in that way, changing it. You can ignore the fact that on your street where you live, the speed limit is 35 miles per hour. You could have never have seen the book, never have opened the law book, never have gone down to the courthouse and looked at the, the city ordinance. But it doesn't change the fact that if you're driving down the 35 mile per hour road at 85 miles per hour and the policeman pulls you over and they say, sir, why were you going 50 miles per hour over the speed limit? You cannot use it as a legal defense. I didn't know. I never saw the book. I never opened to read it myself. In that instance, you don't change the law. That law is about to change you and your wallet. <laughs> in the same way, the Bible is a book that speaks to us, not just what we want to hear. Yes, because there are things in the scripture that I want to hear. I want to know that I'm loved. I want to know that I'm saved. I want to know that I'm forgiven. But it will also tell me the things that I need to hear. Needing to know that trouble don't last always and neither will I if I stay in trouble. The Bible tells me that God doesn't like ugly. The Bible tells me that you should not hurt the weak and that the strong will be humbled. These are things that I may not want to know, but I need to know them. And the Bible says it to us. And in fact, in effect, that changes us. And I don't change it. Another verse to remember is Hebrews 4 verse 12, where we're told that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner that word is powerful it's the discerner it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so when it says the word of god is quick it's not speaking to its speed it's speaking to its vita its vitality its life its zoe it is something that affects us and it impacts our life uh, one of the laws of motion that if something is moving and it hits something else, all of the energy that was in the movement of that other object now is released into the other object. It, it continues in a domino type of effect. The Bible has an impact on us that moves us to impact others, even when you reject it. Because your movement to dodge it, your movement to fight it is going to impact other people in your rejection and or in your reception. When you receive the word of God, when you believe the word of God, it impacts and transforms others around you as it transforms you. It's quick, a double-edged sword, it says there in Hebrews 4, changing us and others. One way you could look at that particular part of that verse. 
Because when you go to John 17, verse 17, this impact nature, this transformative nature of the book, not a book, but the book, when you read it, when you believe it, and when you live it, Jesus says, you'll be sanctified. That's why he said, sanctify them in his prayer for us to his father. Sanctify Chris through my truth. Sanctify Tara through my truth. Sanctify John through my truth. Sanctify Sarah through. My, are you getting the point? Jesus says the way for us to be impacted is to be impacted by the truth the word that transforms us. And that's why he says, because it's your word. It's your word that is truth. This is awesome. The Bible is the anvil upon which every other idea, belief, and thought has been shattered upon. The anvil. It is the basis of truth. It is what establishes what's right and what's wrong. It's how we know what's good is good and what's bad is bad. Even when we ignore it, even if we reject it, it cannot be changed. It will only change us. Why? Because it is not my thoughts. It begins with God's thought to ordinary people right now.